Hello and welcome. I'm going to call this week three of a uh, year in a kilt, although it's really post week four at this point, um, or seems post week four. Uh, I've been really bad at figuring out when to do these in the last two weeks, and it just, timing hasn't worked out. Uh, the first two videos I set aside time on a Sunday to do them, and then I got busy uh, two, week into the, two weekends ago. Just didn't get around to it this past weekend. Um, the long and short of that is you're going to get two videos today of sorts because uh, I'm going to talk about the one I was planning on doing two weeks ago when it was ridiculously cold here in Toronto. Um, it was in the like minus 30 to minus 40 with the wind chill range. It was pretty cold and I was out both days in it. Uh, so I wanted to address you know weather issues and uh, talk about staying warm in a kilt because that's that's one of the top questions I get from people is, aren't you cold? And the answer is, a, no, not really. Um, and the other reason things have been delayed is I uh, got, well, I ordered some new, two new kilts in end of December, and they were arriving, or supposed to have been arriving, they cleared customs well over a week ago now. Uh, I finally got them today, so I'm going to be doing a, an unboxing video. And I thought it was just one kilt. It was ended up being both of them, it looks like it have shipped. They're still in the box uh, down here. So that's going to be video number two. And, uh, yeah, not that, not that I'm hitting a certain quota, but I was planning on doing these two things in the last two weeks, and both of them just got uh, all messed up for all kinds of unknown reasons. Well, and time issues. Um, so I'm probably going to play around with the time and day I have been setting aside to do these because Sunday doesn't seem to be working at all. Uh, not sure when the next one's going to come out, but uh, I'm going to see what I can do this this week to get one out for this week too. So, with all that out of the way, um, it's been three and a half, four weeks now. Um, I've been in a kilt every day. I've been nice and cozy. Uh, no issues with weather, even when it's been dipping down to minus 30 or minus 40. And uh, there's there's a couple reasons for that. The first of which I'm wearing uh, right here, and it. I apologize. This does not photograph well because it is, well, it's black watch, tartan, uh, and it's not the black watch modern. It's the the more traditional uh, black watch weave or palette color palette set, which is very dark, uh, and in dark light it looks black and in photographs it, it shows up just solid black but I can assure you this is a black watch this is a 8 yard 19 ounce uh, military reproduction circa World War One, World War Two, uh, that I got through What Price Glory and I'll throw a comment down in the uh, or link down in the, uh, the description area uh, have a look uh, they carry all kinds of these uh, they're actually they're discontinuing the Black Watch Tartan uh, effective whenever they run out of stock. So I jumped on this in December because I knew I'd want it for when it was cold. Um, it's very very warm. It's uh, it's warmer than my my eight or yeah eight yard uh, sixteen ounce wool kilt. Uh, I can definitely see why why these were uh, made to this weight. Um, I run about uh, 195 US plus tax and shipping, so like 230 all in, which is not bad for, for a, cult, a kilt, especially wool. Uh, so, for particularly cold days, um, I break this out uh, definitely. This is the, the big boy kilt uh, for, for cold days. Um, the other thing I do, I've got my jacket and my external get up aside that I'm going to briefly throw on to give you an idea. But I've also discovered that by rolling up the kilt hose, and then usually I have to move the, the garter up on each side, by rolling those up uh, under the jacket, which I'll put on momentarily, uh, I'm nice and toasty, uh, provided you're wearing wool kilt hose. And these are, these are not wool, these are cotton. Uh, I've got one nice pair of cotton uh, hose, two two or three nice pairs of wool hose, and I definitely need to acquire more of the wool ones. Um, the big problem I find with the wool hose is they get really itchy uh, around anywhere they're, they're touching skin. 
workaround for that I've discovered is uh, I bought some kilt hose from uh, Sport Kilt. That's the company. It took me a second to remember. Um, and they're really thin. They're really, really thin. They're like sports sport sock thin, but the same length as these. Um, they make great under the wool hose uh, hose, and that keeps my my skin from feeling like I want to tear it off. But uh, yeah. So aside from this, what am I wearing outside when it's cold? Uh, army boots, of course. Which are in the hall because I'm not dragging my my army boots in here and getting salt and dirt and junk all over. Uh, So here I've got my uh, Outback Duster, which I uh, don't remember the website I bought it off, but it was about 200 bucks a couple of years ago. I'll dig it up and throw it down in the comments as well. And under that, I've got a, a rather nice hoodie. Uh, it's like a denim type material on the outside, like a fleecy type of material on the inside. So I layer those two for the winter. And that's what I was doing before I was wearing a kilt all the time anyway. Um, so I find with that, I'm not going to do it up all the way because it's pretty damn warm in here. It's a full length duster. So it covers, you can see how, how far down. Um, you see a little bit of flashes showing, but that's it. So that fully done up, plus a uh, hat, gloves, um, my blanket scarf, which I only have the one, it's also a black watch. So that around the neck. And I've been nice and toasty like this. The uh, blanket scarf I find gives me just enough extra padding around the neck and uh, the chest. It's great. And between the hoodie and the, the full length uh, duster, which cuts down the wind completely, uh, it's fine. It's uh, not, not bad at all, particularly with the, the hose rolled up when it's really cold, which you know, minus, minus 20 plus is unpleasant without uh, the hose rolled up. Uh, as far as you know, other internal bits, um, had all kinds of people you know think that, that pants would be warmer than uh, than the kilt hose or than the kilt hose than the kilt, and it's not for a couple reasons that uh, the best analogy that I've come up with that I, I can think of that that would plausibly explain this is it's it's uh, Kilt or a kilt to pants is comparable to a pair of gloves uh, versus a pair of mitts. Or with a pair of mitts, you've got uh, your fingers are together, you've got more body warmth. Same sort of concept uh, with with a kilt, especially a wool kilt um, versus legs. You've got just this column of warm air trapped beneath beneath uh, the layers of wool, which is uh, very breathable. Um, you don't have sweat cooling and being held directly against your skin for the most part, uh, depending on what you're wearing or not wearing underneath, and I'm not going to go into detail there. Um, so all in all, very warm, uh, very effective. I can see why they were common, uh, even though Scotland does not have the climate that we, uh, we do here in Canada. Um, I do think that they're, they're they're pretty similar at least on the coast. I don't think they get quite as cold in the winter, but I haven't done a lot of uh, investigation into that. So that's uh, that's it for video number one. Uh, layers definitely. Um, if you're worried about staying warm and you're in a cold climate, uh, look into what price glory. Their their wool kilts are pretty fantastic, and uh, definitely you know, wool wool kilt hose are the way to go for the cold weather. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.